and welcome to All Different First Issues, the weekly top 5-ish comic review show. These are the best new releases from June 29th, 2016. I'm the Archivist, and I know I took a week off, but I needed that break. But don't worry, there's going to be a special Episode 0 in the next couple of weeks for those comics I missed. And yes, All Different First Issues is different than all new, because this is a top 5-ish list rather than a review of all the comics that came out. So, in no particular order, here we go! Spectrum Number 1, written by P.J. Harrisma and Alan Tudyuk, art by Jason Johnson and Sarah Stone and Kristen Fitzner denton So, Spectre is a comic with Nathan Fillion starring as Captain Jack Raker and Alan Tudyuk as pilot Cash Wayne, and to escape an alien invasion, they steal a starship that neither of them know what to do with. I do not watch Con Men, the show with Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyuk. I know, I'm a monster. And yes, the show within a show is an homage to Firefly, but this issue doesn't really paint itself too heavily as just being a Firefly reskin, which works really well for those of us that already read the Dark Horse Firefly comics. The writing is a good space romp with a legitimately interesting premise and hook to get you into the second issue. And the art is pretty good also, with the cover there basically being the style they go with, which is fairly safe to say is really good. Though there is once or twice the action can get a bit muddled, but otherwise it's a good pleasant read and I'm definitely curious about the next issue. Thumbs up! Hillbilly Number 1 by Eric Powell well, that certainly was an Appalachian fantasy epic. This is the story of Rondal, a bearded, blind-but-not-blind guy who inhabits a world of magical creatures, fighting witches and being a hero in the gritty way that only a bearded hermit in the woods can. I was pleasantly thrilled by this. The art is pristine and phenomenally epic, with the woods and area feeling sketchbook realistic while still holding the airs of the fantastical within. And the writing, this is a solid first issue explaining the backstory of Rondal, as well as giving us a look at some of the legends floating around. It's a superb book that you definitely should read, and yeah, that's why this one is <laughs> definitely in the top this week. Jade Street Protection Service No. 1, written by Katie Rex, illustrated by Fabian Lelay, and colors by Mara Jane Carpenter. So, this is a magical girl comic mostly. It follows a group of students who are sent to detention for various reasons and their interactions before stumbling across a shady deal and then one of them getting stabbed. Yeah, on a premise front, it's really not a lot of in-depth story, but it's not trying to be. It's setting up the characters and their dynamics with one another rather than trying to start with an epic grand story. A friend of mine actually described this as the breakfast tub as told through the lens of an RP on Gaia Online, which I'd say is probably the best way to describe it. They do the general bios of the main characters, and they fit into the general roles most RPs run. And, to top it off, it's set in a special academy for magical girls. So, yeah. But I like it. The characters are interesting and entertaining enough to follow that you never feel like it's lagging even when there's predominantly talking scenes. Each girl has a unique history and look that sets each apart. Plus, the art works well to keep the fun style without ever going too cartoony with it. Yep. Go read it for yourself to see what I mean. Robin Hood, I Love New York, number one. Story by Joe Brescia. Words by Lou Avino. Art by David Lorenzo Rivero. Colors by Gracietta. After a hiatus following her last stint in the hood, and a special one-shot that got me hooked onto the character, Robin Hood is back. There's a lot of history in the character, and that's generally touched upon, but now that she has a new case, she's back from her slump and ready to save the city she loves. 
I do have to lead off that this is definitely a part one to the story, giving a fantastic setup to get Loxley back into the superheroics, but only hinting at the war she's about to have defending her city from stoop-dwelling thugs, but not fleshing out her previous run, just hinting at it more, which you should totally go and get as soon as you can. And the artwork is solid, with Rivero having a good grasp of fluid action, but not getting bogged down where there's just standing around and narrating allowing for great panel movement of the character, even during talking scenes. Plus, the colors really make it all pop perfectly, so all in all, this would probably be my favorite book out this week. And those are the top five comics out this week. No, they aren't in any actual ranked order, so don't read into that. If you agree, disagree, or if I missed a huge book that totally deserves to be on this list, let me know in the comments below. Or you can tell me how horrible I am on Twitter, at Bradley Nephilim or on the Archivist Facebook page, where I also share panels and random comic stuff. Plus, don't forget to check out the rest of Badly Productions. There's great articles on comics, movies, video games, anime, and more. And as always, stay golden, Inklings.